What's the most inaccurate thing your child has ever been taught in school? My daughter's teacher told her class that humans only use 10% of their brains. Sophia came home asking if she could unlock the other 90% to become super smart. I'm a neurosurgeon at Children's Hospital. We actually use our entire brain, sweetheart. That's a myth. She looked crushed. But Mrs. Garcia said Einstein only used 12%, and that's why he was a genius. The next morning, I emailed Mrs. Garcia asking to do a brain presentation for career day. She replied within minutes, thrilled to have a real brain doctor visit. When I walked into the classroom, 30 kids sat cross-legged, eyes wide with anticipation. I heard you learned humans only use 10% of their brain, I began. Every hand shot up. Can you teach us to use more? One boy asked eagerly. Yeah, can we become geniuses? A girl added. I pulled out my tablet and showed them live brain scans. This is what your brain looks like right now, sitting here listening. The entire brain lit up in brilliant colors. Reds, blues, yellows pulsing across the screen. See all these bright areas? That's your whole brain working. Every single part, Mrs. Garcia shifted uncomfortably. But our science book clearly states, I walked over and flipped through the pages. Copyright 1995. This myth started in the early 1900, before we had brain scanners, I explained. I showed them MRI videos of kids their age thinking, moving, talking, every region blazing with activity. A girl raised her hand, looking disappointed. So we're already using our whole brain? We can't get smarter? You're already incredibly smart, I smiled. Your brain is a miracle exactly as it is. Mrs. Garcia's face had turned bright red. Well, thank you, Doctor. Martinez, but we really need to move on to reading time now. As I started packing up, a boy shot his hand up. Wait, so our book is completely wrong? The entire class erupted in excited whispers and questions. Mrs. Garcia's voice got sharp. The curriculum specifically requires, actually, I said, pulling up state education standards on my phone. Critical thinking skills are emphasized right here. That's when she asked me to step into the hallway immediately. Do you have any idea what you've just done? She hissed, her face flushed with anger. These children will question absolutely everything I teach them now. Isn't that exactly what good education should accomplish? I've been teaching for 15 years. I'm not throwing out my entire lesson plan because some doctor thinks he knows better than our approved material. That evening, Sophia asked why Mrs. Garcia had seemed so angry at her all afternoon. The next day, Sophia's creative writing assignment came back with harsh red marks and a note. Please stick to topics we've covered in class only. She'd written an imaginative story about a girl who used her whole brain to solve complex problems. Marked down to a C, Sophia started coming home deflated and confused. Mrs. Garcia says I'm being too complicated and difficult. I scheduled an urgent meeting with Principal Johnson and brought printed brain imaging studies, current neuroscience textbooks, and Sophia's unfairly graded assignments. When confronted with overwhelming scientific evidence, Mrs. Garcia crossed her arms defensively. The 10% concept motivates children to strive harder. Principal Johnson leaned forward. But Dr. Martinez, is this information scientifically accurate? Long, uncomfortable silence. It's inspirational and age appropriate. My daughter is being actively punished for thinking critically and learning real science, I said firmly. Six weeks later, the entire school district updated their outdated science curriculum. Mrs. Garcia was required to complete professional development courses on current brain science. Sophia now carefully questions everything she learns before accepting it as fact.